So what's the last tip? This is for single guys. I don't know if this looks very coupled up. If there's any single guys here, this is what you need to do. You'll be happy forever. Find somebody beneath you. <laughs> in every category. Who is Joe Matarese? What impulses drive this Italian-American comedian from New Jersey? And why is his story one of such intrigue to the online community? These are just some of the questions I hope to wrestle with as I investigate a comedy career spanning over 30 years, with credits including America's Got Talent, The Late Show with David Letterman, The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson, and Chelsea Lately. However, the universe surrounding Joe spans far wider than his profession, and to fully appreciate the mind of such a man requires a significant historical context. The objective of this documentary is to present a rough outline of Joe's hopes and aspirations, as seen through the projects he undertakes, and measure those against the demons that have plagued him in recent years. The tale of Joe Matarese is one teeming with lies, angry outbursts and impulsive deeds, and as such has attracted unwanted attention from subreddits to Discord servers where mockery of this type is in abundance. That said, this documentary will only act as a small window into the world of Joe Matteris, using a few examples of his erratic behaviour to chronicle an incredibly troubling period for the 50-year-old father of two. This documentary begins at the height of Joe's fame in July 2014, America's Got Talent. He appeared on the show as a struggling father and husband, chasing his dream of being a successful comedian. My name's Joe. I'm from Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and I'm going to be doing stand-up comedy today. The America's Got Talent production team conveyed a heartwarming against all odds story, painting Joe as the hero. His set was viewed by millions, and a panel including Howard Stern, Heidi Klum and Howie Mandel gave him a standing ovation. After just two minutes of innocuous material ranging from growing old to being a father, Joe became a national sensation, albeit temporarily. I think I could win an Oscar for some of my performances in my own living room. The category would be nominees for best caring in a non-caring situation by a father. Until now, Joe's biggest credits were limited to a handful of appearances on The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson in 2011 and two performances on The Late Show with David Letterman, including this one in 2007. Two kids, you need medication. You really do. That's totally true. Like, I've been on anti-anxiety medication for about uh, a year and a half now, and I, I highly recommend them, seriously. It's the best thing I've ever done with my life. Like, this is how great they are. A couple weeks ago, I get pulled over for going 63 in a 60. Yeah. I look in my rearview mirror, I'm watching the guy write the ticket, and as he's writing it, this came out of my mouth. I'm like, well, you know, I was three over. <laughs> as Joe advanced to the next round of America's Got Talent, something changed. Having already saturated the emotional reception his previous audition managed, the production team concluded he was now surplus to requirements. The same material that had the panel in hysterics a week before was now deemed unfunny, and Joe bombed terribly. I'm, uh, as you know, I'm 46 years old, two kids, which has been killing me. I gotta be honest, uh, when I had one kid, it was so much easier. All I had to do was drink like two beers at dinner, and I'd be like, <laughs> where is he going? You know, <laughs> he just broke that thing I loved. This would represent a significant disappointment to the comedian, but one that would only encourage him to keep trying. Just as his hero, Rocky Balboa, never gave in, Joe would not be deterred, and despite this appearance signifying the peak of his exposure as a working comedian, Joe would soldier on. A running theme of Joe's is discussing his ongoing battle with psychological issues. The role of medication is not only prevalent in his everyday life, but on stage also. As a husband to a pharmacist, the subject of medication is something Joe heavily leans on when performing. Seriously, I've been on antidepressants for about a year, 
And I highly recommend them, man. Best thing I ever did. My doctor said, Celexa, he goes, 20 milligrams. And I'm kind of cheap, okay? So I started breaking the medication in half. So pivotal to Joe's material this was that he named his 2016 CISO special Medicated. He would also promote the special using a picture of himself with his hands overflowing with prescription meds. Likewise, struggling with a reliance on pills soon became a regular topic on his self-help styled podcast, Fixing Joe. What you guys, I posted up there on Twitter and Facebook, what do you guys think of me switching to 20 milligrams? I feel like it's been great. I feel, I feel a lot better. I literally, I don't know, I feel like, I don't know if I would have been able to do this or maybe it's because I'm done the special and I have a lot less on my plate, but like I was just sitting on my deck in my backyard, just listening to birds tweeting. <laughs> the concept of fixing Joe was simple. In a world where Opie and Anthony style comedy podcasts where as many as four or five working comedians would each compete for the best line, Joe saw an opportunity. Instead, he would invite comedians onto the podcast to attempt to help Joe work through his perceived psychological hang-ups. The show would play out as a long-form conversation, with little to offer to the guest other than the opportunity to fix Joe. That said, the self-help format of the podcast attracted a small but niche audience, including the transgendered host of the Joe Matarese fan podcast, Monumental Waste of Time, Karen from Philly. Right now, what, can you talk to Joe? I'm pissed. Joe, I'm going to tell you straight up, I'm pissed off. You got me heated right now. Heated. Because I'm we... Pissed you're pissed at me? Yeah, I'm pissed at you. We asked you to For come what? on because, listen, we asked you to come on, You didn't, and then you didn't want to do it, so fine. No big deal. Now you call in the middle of my show. So what, babe? But we what already we... had stuff going, and everything gets rearranged now because the, the great and powerful Joe's on the phone. Like, yeah, he's I'm a pissed. celebrity. Yes, he's a celebrity. It was at this time that Joe began forming a close working relationship with Anthony Cumia of Opie and Anthony fame. Joe would frequently appear on Anthony's new show, The Anthony Cumia Show, hosted on his own network, Compound Media, and ran by a former police officer, Keith the Cop. Uh, you know what? He was actually an actor before Gilligan's Island, and older people knew who he was. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, it's Gilligan's Island, <laughs> it's the hell. fucking millionaire. <laughs> The platform quickly gained a controversial reputation as a hotbed of far-right and often racist rhetoric. Uh, if you go back, for as far back as national crime rates have been collected, blacks have committed crimes at substantially higher rates than whites. Hate However, facts, facts, meaning something that is indisputably right. true, but which upsets so many people and is called, like, which is get, gets, gets you labeled a bigot. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry I can't read a book because I went to public school for two years. Still, the appeal of featuring on a network that included the likes of Talib Starks and Gino Bisconti was enough for Joe to continue using Compound Media's paid subscriber base of over 100,000 listeners to plug his podcast and upcoming gigs. Although Anthony didn't quite enjoy the same chemistry with Joe as he did with Jim Norton, they still shared many interests. Both would often break into impressions, with segments littered with popular catchphrases from the likes of Tony Soprano, Andrew Dice Clay, and Tony Danza. This kid watching porn, it's a different thing, right? If he would have caught me watching porn, Tony would have been like, oh, what the fuck is that fucking porn? <laughs> <laughs> that bang but seven? Oh, it's a fucking classic. <laughs> Good for you. Since I came over to Mohammed, my, my new uh, uh, Arab name is Dices, and I'm a terror. I'm a comedy terrorist! Ow! Oh! Joe even cornered Anthony after a show, pressuring the former radio host to partake in an improvisational exchange between Tony Soprano and Tony Danza. So look, it's James Gandolfini! <laughs> uh, what the fuck? We didn't do the fucking bit, I told you, because the bit probably wasn't gonna fucking work like it's fucking bothering right now my fucking phone in your fucking studio. Sorry. Fuck you, Danger. I'm, I'm sorry, thoughts and prayers, thoughts I don't, and prayers. I don't think you're a fucking nice guy, I think you're really a fucking fake, you're a fucking fugazi, he's a fucking <laughs> cockhead. <laughs> Tell you he's a fucking asshole. It was thanks to this relationship that Joe was able to call on Anthony to be a guest on a live iteration of his Fixing Joe podcast to be released in January 2017. Anthony's former radio partner and comedian Jim Norton had also agreed, as did longtime friend and former Howard Stern Show co-host Artie Lang. Joe's plan was to retain the old format of Fixing Joe, 
encouraging the three giants of radio to help fix him. It, it couldn't be harder for me, but seriously, like my wife will yell at me if I have the phone on, where you probably would get yelled at for your, your phone not being on. Uh, like, yeah. I can't get a hold of you, well, where are thing. you? Yeah, you get everyone getting touch with you, now you can make calls on planes. There was an expectation from Joe that fixing Joe live would be more of a long-form conversation moderated by Joe himself, but the show soon derailed. Well, we can say one of the things I think with everybody running like fucking crazy these days is that nobody's really connecting. I know this is like fun for you guys to slam the shit out of me. Yeah, yes. But it actually is, yeah. it is. I don't think I'd like this as much. No. But... <laughs> I can't think of anything more fun no. than this evening. It, this it, is actually awesome. It's fun, but it's very disconnected, and that's why you're single. It's oh, like a, stop I'm serious. It. No. I'm no, serious. No, that's why I'm a comedian. <laughs> the quick wit of the other three proved too much for Joe to keep up with, and he was soon the target of a comedic onslaught from Anthony, Jim, and Artie. Okay. I think that's why I, I'm the I don't know what it is, but every comedian that I've met that is super fucking quick-witted, like all three of you guys, you're all single, and you have trouble in a fucking conversation. Uh, yeah, yeah, hold on, you every comedian. I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> trouble yeah, in a conversation. Wait, no, 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 no. wait, wait, no, no. See? He th he thinks I have a trouble connecting. Tell him I don't. <laughs> No, that's true. Jimmy that says. True. And every comedian no, it's not. I know. It's wrong. It's actually wrong. Every comedian I know who's not witty and not funny is married to a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> the podcast was a disaster. Joe was exposed, and his oversensitivity to friendly ribbing caused an online ripple that would drastically change the way he would interact with his fans forever. <laughs> no, but, ser but seriously, I think you guys can relate to when you're in some sort of situation like this with a bunch of comics, and if they're talking more than you and getting more laughs, it's a normal comedian thought to be like, fuck, I'm bombing. It's you're like, we bombing. get that no feeling. No one is though. thinking of that. No, I, I know, but, we, but it's a natural thing. Like, so I don't know you're going to die amongst your grandkids. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll die at a Marriott in St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> Joe was suddenly painted with the most toxic brushing comedy. He was a comedian who couldn't laugh at himself. One who'd sooner lash out in anger and spite than show humility. For all the wrong reasons, the podcast exploded online. Jim and Anthony rediscovered their former O and A magic, competing with each other and an animated Artie Lang in hilariously jabbing at the New Jersey comedian. Joe's reaction was to stew and sulk before spitting out insults void of comedic context. I'm not a disconnected person. Like I know that you guys are quicker witted than me and very not true. I, I I really think that. That's I, not I true. know for a fact if we had that yes, you are, but I know from being in this business for twenty nine years what, what I might be better at than you guys. Life. Which would be Well life, life probably yeah. life. Is he doing an opium impression? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Oh. Yeah, dude, fixing Joe. <laughs> this right now is what you should fix. The fact that you're getting resentful. I'm not getting resentful. Or, or, or I'm uncomfortable. Not resentful. Well, no, no, no. You know I'm having no, fun with you. No, I know you're. I'm not resentful. I swear to God, I'm not mad. I like that you're getting the laughs. I swear to God, I'm not. Well, that, someone's, I, 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 someone's not, being a cunt. No. <laughs> the aftermath left Joe with a PR disaster on his hands. Having spent thousands on a multiple camera shoot for the event, he was now faced with an impossible choice. Either post the show online, only to be further ridiculed, or take it down and waste the money, time and effort spent organising it. To make matters worse, Joe decided to put the live show behind a paywall, only for it to be predictably bootlegged and shared online. Since this only served to divert traffic away from Joe's YouTube page, he finally uploaded it, only to later disable comments and likes due to the overwhelmingly negative response. The move would only further amuse the online community, and in particular the Opie and Anthony subreddit, an online community of people who used to be known as pests. This would represent the beginning of Joe Matarisi's demented relationship with internet trolls, who would continue to torment the comedian using both creative and nefarious means. However, it was former Compound Media alumni Mike David, of the Red Bar Radio Show, who would prove to be Joe's principal nemesis. Uh, what is this, my poster? Uh, let me check this out here. God damn it, Joey Mattresses! Mike David was awarded the 4pm Friday slot by Compound Media's executive producer, Keith the Cop Maresca. 
That's right, motherfuckers. Red Bar, you asked for it. You fucking asked for it. And uh, you got it. Nonetheless, he soon landed himself in hot water with the bumbling former police officer. Mike led a ruthless campaign against struggling comedian and burger enthusiast Mike Fenoyer, after his compound media show Finer Things amassed a somewhat ironic following of viewers who hated it. We talk comedy, we talk sex, relationships, Listen. sports, Ooh. beer, burgers, beer, travel, burn. toys, cartoons. You Listen to this list of bullshit. Beers, burgers, sports, uh, lovemaking, uh, toys, comics. Whatever you guys are into, I don't know what you're into, I don't know what I'm into. This resulted in the first of three strikes for the Chicago-based broadcaster. Still, Mike David would continue to poke fun at the flow of low to mid-level New York comedians who would sit in with Anthony Cumia. Mike felt the pitiable quality of discussion and entertainment from guests such as Joe DeVito, Jared Freed, and Joe Matarese were negatively impacting the legacy of the former Sirius XM superstar. After Joe Matarese had timidly reported Red Bar's alleged bully tactics to Keith, the Free Speech Network had heard enough. Joe Matarese would be described by Keith as part of the Compound Media family, and an ultimatum was set, one that Mike swiftly ignored before leaving the network. Hey Mike, let's have a content discussion again tomorrow. I'm getting hits from Joe Matarese about you going after his show. Also, there is some minor stuff from Gavin. I've never had to have these discussions with anyone else, and you and I have discussed going at it with other shows on the network and friends of the network. I did kindly ask that you did not make your compound media shows about that stuff. That being said, let's talk tomorrow. The likelihood is this relationship might not make it to strike three. Keith Maresca, executive producer, program director. After witnessing his sensitivity being teased, Mike David would continue to keep an eye on Joe Matarese, and his patience was soon rewarded when viewers of the Red Bar radio show encouraged Mike to cover Fixing Joe Live. Whoa. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Shut up, Artie, because something's up. No, but I, I feel like the world we're in now, that everybody's like a little fucking disconnected. No one has a real conversation. This doesn't feel like a real conversation. This is how you wanted to have a... Uh, yes, now I see why you had to watch it from the beginning. In a stream stretching to eight hours in length, Mike replayed the event play by play and a fall was born. Are you guys enjoying the show? Yeah! yeah! Do you That's as connected as you can be to an audience. I, I'm not... you... What do you think? Should Anthony take Joe's place? <laughs> yeah! Get out of here, you faggot beard fag! Oh my God. Joe's hypersensitivity, inability to read the room, and overall lack of self-deprecation were sources of huge enjoyment for the Red Bar audience as they continued to break down every nuance of Joe Matarese's character. Okay, I think, I, I, I don't know what it is, but every comedian that I've met that is super fucking quick-witted, like all oh. three of you guys, oh. they're all single. And oh my you have God. trouble in a fucking conversation. Oh, you you think every oh my God! Why is he attacking them? They're nothing but gracious guests. I mean, why would they do his show? I mean, he should be so thankful. He's got these legends. This viewing would create the foundation of Joe's all-out warfare with Mike David. He is in a bad spot. He needs to go down. He needs to be done. We're taking him down. As the now infamous Fixing Joe live video circulated, so did the negative attention received by the 100% Italian comedian. And it wasn't only Red Bar who would discuss the event, with Sirius XM's Jim and Sam show, featuring prop comic Jim Norton and balding former intern Sam Roberts, inviting Joe to discuss the aftermath. But what I should have done is made it free right away, and then, you know, you're not going to get these miscommunications, maybe. So people were like, w that was the first miscommunication. This guy's trying to make money off of Jim Norton and Artie Lang and, and Anthony Cumia's names. Following weeks of adverse feedback, Joe uninstalled Twitter from his phone. As one of many online platforms he blamed for facilitating his anger, Joe continued to evade any sort of personal responsibility. I was like learning. I was like, oh, oh, like... This is this is good. It made me take Twitter off my phone. Okay, now <laughs> I, 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 I can't I can't tweet while driving. You know, you're like right. <laughs> all of a sudden you're like, holy shit! I just had a conversation with a person. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you just were slowly yeah. I mean, so it's improved your life. I, 
I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. I downloaded the Twitter app on the subway. Coming <laughs> yeah, it's over. hard to stay away again. from Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. In the 56-minute interview, Joe expressed his misunderstandings of internet trolling and seemed adamant that he had learned from the experience. One, one interaction back that sounds like... I see. And then they're like, we got him. And when I read, when I read someone write, we got him on the hook, when I, 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 that locked in my brain. I'm yeah. like, I see the game now. Yeah. Oh, they got oh, me on the no. hook. It was like they just went click. You know when you catch a fish, that feeling? You're like, yeah. ah, ah. And they were just like, we got him. And then I went the other way in my head. I'm like, no, you actually just lost me. Jim and Sam would spend the duration of the show enlightening Joe to internet subculture, and in particular to the art of dealing with internet trolls. It's part of it is to it, part of the fun for them. Is like it is fun just it's to fuck funny. around. Like there's a part of it where they're being dicks, and then there's a part of it where like it is just entertaining. Mm -hmm. To like you know what I mean? Like wh where they're just throwing a beating at somebody, and then the high is not what the right and wrong is because mm -hmm. who gives a shit? It's just fun to be bashing this thing. The live event itself was also covered, with Jim Norton offering somewhat condescending advice to Joe in handling comical abuse from other comedians. I, I didn't even didn't even occur to me. Like I looked at you as just a part of the process. Like you were one of us. I, I didn't look at it like you were separate until it looked like you got uncomfortable at one point. I, I thought you got uncomfortable at one point, mm. but I didn't think, oh man, we're killing Joe. I felt like this is his thing and we're all having a good, like, I really saw you as part of it. Joe would idiotically suggest that he had now figured out a more developed and considered approach to being abused online. Although his increasing dependency on antidepressants would suggest otherwise. Once you realize it's a game, it's, it's funny. And right. It's funny, and it doesn't hurt anymore. Uh -huh. No matter what you do, it doesn't really. Hurt. It, like I said, yeah. And then it's just uh, okay. How long do you want to? You want to just keep talking about this forever? I'm like, I'm really not going to engage with you. The situation was further discussed on the Anthony Cumia show, with Joe's antipathy to comedy roasting the subject. Fucking Joe Matarese. Look, I love Joe Matarese, but I could give a fuck if anyone shits on Joe Matarese. Joe Matarese, Joe Matarese. I'll shit on Joe Matarese. I don't care. This fucking network doesn't live or die by Joe Matarese. Joe's unpredictably volatile response to being targeted inevitably attracted the darker elements of both the Opie and Anthony subreddit and the Red Bar Radio community. Users began contacting comedy club owners and bookers using fake Joe Matarese alt accounts on social media platforms such as Facebook and Twitter. In this exchange, Helium Comedy Club owner Mark Grossman accepts a request to reschedule numerous gigs in May. Similar alt accounts were used to post explicit material such as this tweet from a cleverly misspelled Joe Matarese handle. Elsewhere, Joe Matarese became something of a meme, with users from the Opie and Anthony subreddit raiding Periscope streams and impersonating Joe, often with racist undertones. Hello? Hey, it's Joe Matter Reese here. I just want to say I hate n****. Man, sit your dumb ass up. <laughs> hey, it's Joe Matter Reese here. N****s aren't people. You said what? In one particular Periscope raid, former Craig Ferguson co-host Josh Robert Thompson spent over five hours batting away an unconvincing Joe Matter Reese impersonator during an attempted radio pilot. Hello, you're on the air. Please, Josh, I'm begging you. Ten bucks, I'll roast. All right, all right. Hello, you're on the air. Five bucks, Josh, I'll roast you. All right, next. five bucks. You can tickle my balls. I'll stick it in for a minute. Hello, you're on the air. All right, I'll do it for free. Don't tell my wife. All right, I'll do it for free. Don't tell my wife. Hey, Josh, it's Joe Matarese. How you doing? Okay. No, well, you guys win. Okay. Is that like what's the end? What's the end game? Like you don't want me to do shows anymore? Do you want me to go away? Is that why you do it? Is that why you guys do this? Like the guy's been doing it for five fucking hours. Meanwhile, New York veteran comedian Nick DiPolo spent an entire show with Joe Matarese in studio, taking calls such as this one from a swarm of former Opie and Anthony pests. It's all the same sort of same sort of shit. The same sort of character that's overplayed that, quite frankly, hasn't gotten you anywhere, and yet you still, you embrace But Cor him. Corey, let me, yeah. Corey, let me interject, but, but he's, draw he's drawing from his life. Should he 
What should he become a like a tra- a cross dresser to change no, it up? Should, should he invent a I'll character? Answer that question. He should be more interesting. He should stop getting fucking high all day. And think people are going to care. <laughs> see, see that's what these guys high. always say. Okay, if Artie Lang is going out and getting heroin, that's a story he can tell about winding up in a hotel room with some fucking prostitute. So right. gets a prescription from his wife, goes to CVS, fills it, goes home, pops pills, and what? <laughs> Lays around all day. It's not interesting. <laughs> Am I wrong, Nick? Am I wrong? <laughs> I don't know. I fucking, uh, That's I he's That's a good comic. Despite Joe's insistence that he had learned his lesson, his misuse of Twitter continued to plague the middle-aged road comic. Not only was Joe spotted responding to his own tweets with sycophantic compliments, only to later pass it off as sarcasm, he would also be drawn into futile arguments about his income, claiming to earn over $80,000 on stand-up alone a year. His all-out war with the haters had also bizarrely expanded to delusional claims about successful pitch meetings, before a rather strange period of Joe's Twitter activity saw him plug gigs in the third person, creating the illusion of an assistant in his employ. However, it was an off-the-grid red bar fan who elicited the most insane of Joe's Twitter reactions. According to an email from a comedy club owner hosting Joe Matarese, a Twitter user with the alias Woodward of AZ had threatened Joe, stating how the comedian would need security. He further claimed that Joe had called a black female comedian hosting the event the N-word, sullying Joe's otherwise tolerant reputation. Joe's response was to tweet to his followers his intention to involve the authorities, claiming he was documenting everything and collecting evidence using screenshots. At 2pm that day, an exasperated Joe announced he will also be leaving social media for good. An arbitrary deadline of 10pm that evening was set as Joe tweeted his goodbye. After a short period of using the platform solely to plug gigs and material, Joe buckled. As big a factor as Joe's response to trolls was in making him a target for online abuse, Joe's naivety was equally pivotal in feeding the entertained mass. Perhaps the best example of this occurred during his attempts to utilize the video platform StageIt, a place where creators could sell tickets directly to viewers for access of their live streams. Joe had sold just a handful of tickets for a show in which he would take calls and interact with the audience in a more closed environment, free of trolls. In yet another turn for the worst for Joe, technical difficulties prevented the stream from broadcasting. Members from an Opie and Anthony Discord channel saw the disaster unfold as a popular ONA subredditor known by the name Stinks restreamed it to his YouTube channel, aptly named Stinks News Network. Uh, I know what I could, I could do it on my phone. It's, but why are you YouTube streaming it? So, you guys so can we can it. enjoy. It's free. No, it's very much. I'm on. I'm on that. I'm on it, and I didn't have to pay anything. The show hasn't, it hasn't started. started. Oh, but so when it's on, show I, lately. So when it's when it's on, they're gonna ask you for a credit card. Yeah. <laughs> Using his own phone number for fans to call in on, Joe received a flurry of calls from the Discord group claiming to be Stage It technical support. Tell him you're getting emails from users uh, that got locked, me, locked I, out. Try, all I can say is try restarting it. When, when you say there's three or five, what are you looking at? Are you looking at your Wi-Fi, like your 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 uh, like the the Wi-Fi? This is Wi-Fi list available, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But now when I it all dropped off. For me, reset the system means that you guys have to pay a third time. <laughs> Tell them to do it on Periscope. Can you do it on Periscope, oh, Joe? You can't. Yeah, but uh, you know, it, it, the Periscope doesn't work the same way. This is like yeah, a whole little. Yeah, he doesn't get his fifty cents. Point, ask ask him because really he doesn't get his fifty cents. Like third time I've used it, and it allows people to, you know, talk to me in real time and uh, and do these little tipping services and stuff like that. Okay. Um, change. Well, let me. I'm gonna go. I, I got some friends online. Let me talk to them. I'll give you a call back. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Bye. You're like this. He's so fucking stupid, man. You're his official tech support guy. Now. <laughs> a Discord member by the name of Real Big Dummy initiated the hoax before Stinks himself encouraged Joe to restart the stream numerous times. Hey, Joe. This is uh Ian with Stage It from the SNN department. <laughs> What we figured out, uh, so we're getting some users that are complaining because you restarted the show, they got locked out and they already paid for the other one. So we have it set up now. If you just start a new one, 
all those users will be able to get in for free. That already paid no, no, no. on your previous. No, they'll pay, but it'll automatically respawn. You have to start one last one. We have to start one more because we re we reauthorized it. Start it up again. Yeah, one last time, and it will let users from both the rooms that already paid in. Okay. I don't have to tell them anything. No, it they'll they'll get an email saying that when you start the new show, everyone who already paid for a okay. ticket. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right, Joe. Have a good night. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> what? I, the only thing is, I just I don't know if it's gonna work that well, right? Because because people will say that they're gonna have to pay for it. That's that, the idea. That's the whole idea. So everyone gets I, pissed off and has to pay like yeah. four times. The prank was a success, with Joe restarting the stream, forcing viewers to buy more tickets at each attempt. Joe, just keep restarting it until it works. That's all you gotta do. <laughs> Joe, be careful. Stage it. Oh, yeah. No, he fire. already did it, I think. I hope so. Yes, he did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Joe's fans were furious and having already donated, took to Twitter to express their frustration. In another tale of disastrous crisis management, Joe's idea of compensation resulted in him gifting MP3 files of Way's directions, recorded in a host of Joe's unique voices. These included impressions ranging from Damone from Fast Times at Richmond High, his hero Rocky Balboa and Tony Soprano, to original characters such as Angry Meds Joe and Rose, the racist Italian grandmother. It was during this time that a Joe Matarese podcast, 100% Italian, emerged, named after a response from Joe to Mike David examining his violent heritage. Mike was informed that he might get his ass kicked as a learning experience, given that Joe was 100% Italian. He also took to emailing an unusual threat to Mike, referencing the Billy Bat scene in Goodfellas. The podcast featured a poor imitation of Red Bar's imitation of Joe, interviewing Opie and Anthony favourites using heavily doctored clips taken out of context. So seriously, Italian to Italian, what do you think? It was terrible. Come on, it wasn't that bad. It was the worst, I mean, my God. Okay, but what did it make you feel? Uh, anger. Boredom. What about it didn't you like? I could take criticism. I could even change it. It's all pathetic and sad and, um, you know. You really think it's pathetic? It's really pathetic at 50 to be doing this shit. I sold my wedding ring for this. That means something, right? Like, that's pathetic, you know. That's really, that's really weak. So you really hated it that much? I think I have a lawsuit. With views in the thousands, the podcast became something of an underground success, something that severely angered and embarrassed the real Joe. Such was his medicated rage that he had the channel shut down, following three successful copyright strikes. These were successfully challenged and Joe's schemes were once again thwarted. Joe was out of control. Whether this elevation of Joe's foolishness was due to his growing battle with prescription medication or simply down to trolls, his behavior had become severely problematic. Joe began streaming regularly to Periscope and YouTube with increasingly bizarre performances, often responding direct to Mike David's ongoing coverage on Red Bar Radio. In this video, he attends a lavish Tony Soprano style garden party, but spends the duration ranting angrily into his phone. This is probably uh, <laughs> nothing better than when you're at the outdoor barbecue and you show up with a six pack and a birthday gift for their kid and you eat $700 worth of food and drink like $400 in alcohol. Joe fed the trolls an entire buffet of foolish treats as he honed in on attacking Mike's allegedly wealthy father, his teenage fans, and his height. Uh, tell, uh, tell Red Bar to go get more money from his rich dad. He just comes across like, I have a rich dad. Am I the only one that thinks that? Joe, Red Bar says, you get a new start next year. Tell him to ask his dad for more money to buy him more equipment for his fucking eight teenagers that watch him. Tell him I said that. And tell him in his pictures it's obvious 
that he's five foot one. Very small dude. He continued by boasting about his $150,000 development deal, despite having any significant show or projects commissioned. Joe, ask your wife for more money. Mm. That's funny. Like, I don't make any money. Got a $150,000 development deal. Did you ever get one of those? Did you ever get one of those? The clip ends with him unleashing a now famous line after making some quite distressing sounds with his tongue. <sighs> you wish you had a rich wife. You wish you had an attractive rich wife with medical insurance. You five foot one midget. In other videos, a clearly narcotized Joe challenged Mike David to a pay-per-view one-hour showdown, frantically attempting to monetize the hate. Who gives a shit? Let's be like boxers. You know how boxers get in arguments? And they get they get in arguments, and then they, uh, who the hell is the unknown caller? They get in arguments, and then that's supposed to drive you to want to do the pay-per-view, right? So. Maybe Mike from Red Bar and me tease it. We tease it all over social media that we're gonna do an hour together, you know? And and there's a there's a pay per listen, and him and I split the money 50-50. Put that out there to him. I would do that. That'd be fucking hilarious. That'd be fun. It'd be better if I went off my meds though. If I went no Selexa. Got it completely out of my system. I went six straight weeks, no Selexa, and I'm just like a, like back to like when I was a little angrier. And, and then we do it. He was also spotted streaming quietly from another room during a dinner party, clearly dazed and stupefied. In our final video, Joe starts the stream incredibly animated, a likely side effect from his abuse of Adderall. He then moves to aggressively push viewers to his paid service on Patreon, before another lengthy and deranged rant aimed at the trolls. Oh, come on. I'll talk for a very short amount of time here on Stupid Periscope. And then I'm just going to shut it the fuck off. So join the Patreon page. Just join. It's easy. Patreon.com backslash Joe Matteris. Okay? It's the way it's going to work. Okay, I'll hook up a phone, you can Skype in, you can talk to me, you can do whatever you want. But I'm not going to sit here on Skype and just do this, okay? I'm done. Done with the fucking stories and the lies and the fucking bullshit. And people acting like they're fucking tough when they leave. When they go home, no, you're not, you're not tough. Joe was unhinged. He seemed oblivious to his public image and found himself embarrassingly exposed on platforms such as the Monumental Waste of Time podcast. Why do I frustrate you so much? I, that's what I don't because get. You're you don't a understand fucking this. asshole. It's obvious, dude. I can hear it in your voice. If you were in front of me, I would pull the the selecta would be gone, and I would be charging you with a forearm to your fucking chin. You're a fucking asshole, dude. You don't know what you're talking about. You've never done anything in show business. That's it. Again, we're back to that. So I have to have done what something have in done, show dude? business what have you to, have, done to, to have a valid what opinion. What have you done in I need to. <laughs> a fucking opinion. I need to. You haven't done anything. What I, have you done? 
You ready? What have you done? That's what I need to do to have a valid opinion? That makes no sense. During an episode in which Joe called the show from his son's Little League game, Joe was on the receiving end of an onslaught of home truths from comedian Steve Rees. Everybody who's a big fan of I yours, everybody who's a big you, fan of yours you has massive like TV credits, that's what you're telling me? I don't me. want assholes to like me, dude. I'm nice uh, enough to call in to this radio show during a fucking Little League game. I'm on fucking so many medications that I can't get <laughs> angry unless you're an asshole. Bitterness you're and You're a Adderall. fucking asshole, dude. Bitterness dude, and you've Adderall. Made it, you've made it. If I ever fucking run into you or that Mike David guy, I'm going to fucking knock you off no, your fucking Joe, feet. Joe, Joe, Joe. Strangely, Joe remained on the show, only to spend a significant amount of time at his son's Little League game, furiously screaming back at Steve. Dude, you're, you're like asking a Jewish guy what he thinks of my lasagna. Just stop racist. talking to me. That's not racist. I'm only kidding, Joe. I mean, it's beyond stupid, but it's not racist. <laughs> That's like ask, it's like asking a guy that wrote like three knock-knock jokes what he thinks about stand -up, someone's stand-up comedy. But that doesn't make sense at all, Joe, because everybody in the audience you're, of the, you're saying is that the audience have, of the comedy you're show saying is, is you not a goddamn comedian. And it, go to South Dakota and ask them if they Steve, know. I'm trying to think of other Steve, comedians this comes that I to think the are funny. Issue, though. You get like I, you, you, this comes. You have to, no credibility, dude. You got 335 Twitter followers. You're nobody. Oh, You're a jealous oh motherfucker. That's, that's what right, you are. I, never that's how you measure the value of somebody's opinion: the number of Twitter followers. <laughs> This, along with Joe Matarese superfan Karen filming one of Joe's shows, would contribute to him blocking the transgendered former stand-up for months. Uh, this is day 16, blocked by Joe Matarese. So it's day 20 being blocked by Joe. Day 23, uh, blocked by Joe Matarese. Possibly one of the most professionally disastrous of Joe's livestreams resulted in him being all but blacklisted from Anthony Cumia's network, Compound Media. With Anthony now partnering former Howard Stern co-host Artie Lang in their new show, Artie and Anthony, Joe decided to broadcast his denigration of the show to the online world. The video was then played on an episode of Artie and Anthony with Joe himself in studio to answer for his crimes. Yesterday you were very serious though. And, not, and talking behind my back, so it's terrible. Yeah. What do you have? Some of that? I, I do want to hear Let's some. Let's hear of it. it. Let's hear this. Let's hear Shepard Smith. <laughs> Come on. This is. I can't believe this is going to be a two. All I two am hours. booked to go on the Artie and oh, Anthony great. show. This is great. Next Tuesday. This guy looks high as fuck. What, what's about we doing? Wow, Should I be a hundred percent? What are you doing with your eyes? It was, it was like about late this? at night, and I'm, my eye. I, I might. I might not suffering go. Suffering from chronic I dry eye. Twitch, you need restasis. You might not go. Much of Joe's criticism landed at the feet of Artie Lang, stating how the Dirty Work and Beer League actor had difficulty maintaining eye contact with Anthony. <laughs> Artie, oh I don't think is a good as is, is good at the team thing. <laughs> if you watch, I mean, every, everybody's probably watched Artie and uh, Artie movie. and Anthony Cumia. Look at your eyes. I'm sitting there going, "Hey, Artie, just look at Anthony, and you're fine. You're not looking at him when you're oh. talking. You're looking." this other way for two hours just look at them. make I don't know eye contact about. and look oh. at somebody and talk to them and I, I argue wish this with guy them would or just grab the mic and bludgeon laugh, you but you can't <laughs> force trauma like, all of a sudden you see de niro's do you, oh. no, do you have any yeah. in the back not on Am his I fucking phone one yeah. <laughs> <woman, laughs> like girls just like this joe do you have any advice for anyone who's not insanely successful in radio Joe then gave pointers to how the show could work better, including some harsh truths for Anthony, asserting how he struggles with more than one guest. Who's the guy in the back? What's with the eyes? Who's that? Yeah, it's not holding my own. It's just knowing where I really come across. I'm going to say this, and I don't mean it as a diss. You do an Artie and Anthony suck song? I think I'm a very insightful Put it to music. He doesn't open his eyes. He never looks at Anthony. I don't know if I'm the first person Musical number. Artie Lang and Anthony Cumia. I mean, so far there's nothing Anthony Cumia is very good with one guest. He's very good at it. Okay, here we go. This is Artie terrible. Lang. Right okay, you do and a you leave. Or radio. <laughs> where pause it's this. Just pause it for a second. I pause it for a second. Jersey for this. I'm very good with one guest. See, 
I'm connecting that just have to find out who that earlier, guest is. That if I got to be there with Anthony and multiple uh -huh. guests, that's in my yeah. fucked up ADD brain that's not on Adderall at 11 right. o'clock at night. Joe would also indicate that Artie, a known drug addict, was still using, despite Joe himself appearing spaced out. Before he starts talking, would you make that guy the designated driver? <laughs> look at you, man. You don't think you you're look high? a little, I'll say, strung out. What is, yeah. what do you, you look a little strung what out do you in mean, this. Though? What do you your mean? eyes are like, you, you go back and your eyes open wide. <laughs> you look like someone just told Otto George died. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> oh, God. Joe would also mention a sensitive time of Artie's when the overweight drug addict stabbed himself in the stomach numerous times when high. Congratulations for staying on topic uh, despite Joe's fucking desperate attempt deflecting to Artie's drug habits like he actually gives a fuck. Oh, that is thank you. the biggest oh. piece of shit move I've ever seen, Joe. 30 years in the biz and you can't hang? What the fuck's your problem? <laughs> wow. This guy's fucking guess, going at you. I guess you weren't on the end of a call that your friend fucking stabbed himself ten times. Oh, or oh wow. Now, do, now this is how he's deflecting. You up in the video. You're wow. Why, no, but why, why, why are you acting like I don't give a shit? Why the fuck would I not? Tell me why I wouldn't give a shit. Well, if you give a shit, you don't bring that up right now. <laughs> hey, Jesus go. Christ. I'm go. saying that's go. why. Go. That? Can you roll the video? I'm saying <laughs> that that's why. I'm saying that's why, you know, that I'm about letting the air out of his shit. Now I really get them anymore. Yeah, that's what I think You're the of. one fixing him after that? It no, it was Joe. I said stab no, yourself not nine times, Joe. not eight times. This gave the green light for Artie and Anthony to both attack the New Jersey-born father of two, and they didn't disappoint. There's got to be one of, one of your fucking callers. Yeah. Because I saw it on Twitter. There were a lot of people talking about that Artie didn't look good, and they, and he, oh. they I wasn't the only fucking What an asshole. What just an because. asshole. It's just the asshole move. It's just in comparison because he's sitting near me. Huh? <laughs> but I'm saying I'm a regular. You're you desperately know, trying to get through this, and you're bringing bitch. up me stabbing myself. What the fuck is that about? No, I'm oh, saying that I was. No, I don't other, like you. I was on the other end of that. Who phone gives a fuck call? if you get a phone call? What do I care? I said I. How low you are on that list of people I'm worried about getting a call? All right, dude. <laughs> I overcharges me for playing fucking Mel Egan, son. Oh shit! Oh shit! You know, like, you know, like I've been overpaid for ten years. I hope he doesn't get this call. Well, when I know. Wow. When I know someone for a long time and they're my friend. And That's bullshit. Said, uh -huh. We've been friends to each other. Why would I not worry about you? Yeah. yeah. Especially when you're getting 2,500 bucks a head. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. Come on, man. Take the knife out. Yeah, really? When was uh, Out of my I, back. I don't <laughs> <laughs> you stabbed me in my back nine times. I did the front. Oh, please. <laughs> Joe was also subject to the wrath of the callers, with the same trolls who had reveled in his breakdown holding Joe's feet to the flame. Uh, spinach is saying that Mattery sort of stole my money. What is that about? Huh? Hey. Uh, Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey, probably a group on uh, ticket. So first of all, I, I'm not a, a complete hater of you. Uh, I kind of am a fan, but Who? if you remember you, a few weeks ago, I would guess ago, you. Yeah, if you remember a few weeks ago, you did a show, and you were charging a little bit of money to get into it, like fifty cents, and you had you restarted it because it didn't work, and you said you'd give people refunds, but you didn't. And then when people kept asking for refunds, you you promised them MP3s of like voices that you've done for like that wave. <laughs> this is great. This is great. I fucking can't. If I anyone, just, you do voices in waves. Anyone would have really sent me this and said that, I would have sent them fucking the 50 cents back. 50 cents. I don't know what you're talking about. Is he right? Is he saying right or no? That, I, about that about this happened. 50 cents. And the, well, the, so, the website should have refunded you the money. I mean, I don't understand. And I didn't get any of uh, that's what you mm. said in the stream, but you said the guy called you and said that the site would do it. How do I send you money? Uh, how do back. I send you money if I don't have any? 50 to, cents, 50 are. cents for all your listeners. I got that on me. <laughs> A network at which Joe was once considered part of the family would now appear to turn its back on Matarese, with Joe yet to make a single appearance on Compound Media following that memorable episode. To this day, Joe continues to tour and is soon to release a new comedy special titled The Poster's Wrong assumingly to appear on his website. It is yet to be seen just how and when Joe will promote the one-hour show, especially given the morbid fascination with his antics show no signs of dying down. Unfortunately, as we end our journey across the timeline of Joe Matteris, an ill-fated truth remains. Joe is his own worst enemy. All right.
See ya. I don't. I don't read the comments. <laughs>